Hey, Todd. We've still got it set up that everyone is going to enter on mute uh, just to make sure that people don't get talking over each other. Hey, Siri. Hey, Megan. Got it set up again that everybody's entering on mute to make sure that we don't get a ton of people talking over each other, but um, definitely feel free to turn your videos on and wave. Todd's sitting in the grass over there. <laughs> Hello, hello. So we've got a little more time today. So we'll definitely give everybody like another five minutes or so um, to log on before we get started. So feel free to grab a snack, grab some water, stretch, whatever you need to do. And we'll get started in a couple minutes. <laughs> we do have the chat going. Um, again today. So definitely feel free to be putting questions, feedback, comments in there. And then once again, we are recording this, so we'll be able to send this out along with the slides um, to everybody afterwards. Oh, love to hear that, Megan, that you got to share slides with all your clients. That's awesome. We've got some good ones coming up. Um, I mean, I think today will be pretty helpful. Uh, but we also have some other really great ones coming up that I think uh, will be useful. So it's good to have kind of fitness professionals in here to share with clients, but also have some of our clients, former clients and friends kind of tuning into this so we can, uh, we can try to help them as well. What's up, Steven? So like last time, I've got everybody coming in on mute um, to make sure we're not talking over each other and stuff, but the chat box is alive and well. Um, we're gonna give people a couple more minutes um, to log in and then we'll go ahead and get started since we've got a little bit more time today than we did on Monday. Ooh, love it. Series out here getting a two for one on the BLGs with sunshine and a walk. That is awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful today. So I'm hoping that uh, I will get to go take a walk today, get some much needed sunshine on my skin. I realized, and I 
know this about myself and I just keep re realizing it, um, how much the weather affects my mood. So when we're like gray and rainy here for even just a few days in a row, it uh, really screws me up. So I'm very, very happy having the sun come back out. Hey, Tyler, whole Central Athlete crew here. Um, so we're just giving folks a couple more minutes to, uh, to get logged on. Um, everybody's on mute again like last time, but the chat box is alive and well. So you can ask questions, give feedback, um, and uh, just connect with each other while we're on here. So we're going to give people a couple more minutes, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah, Amanda and River are listening. Obviously, River is going to get the most out of this, out of everybody. He's going to understand exactly what I'm talking about, and it's just going to be dropping knowledge on all the rest of the babies he comes into contact with. This is also exciting because it's the first time Jesse has seen me do a BLG talk, so that'll be fun. I honestly was thinking my grandparents might pop into here. They've been really, really active on Facebook lately. I don't know what else they're doing. But Zoom might be a bit much for them to figure out. <laughs> Oh, Nico. <laughs> yeah, George, my cat is out in the living room, not allowed in the office. He would be all up on top of everything in the way. Very cute, but not a great coworker. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. And as people join in, um, they can just jump in. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, but thank you all for kind of tuning into this. This is the second one of these virtual discussions that Central Athlete is doing. Um, we really started doing these as a way to continue to connect to the community as well as um, be able to add value in the best way we know how, which um, goes above and beyond writing programs for us. It's really all about being able to educate people and talk about all these different things that impact their health and fitness um, in a holistic way. And so we are doing more of these sessions. I've got the lineup uh, towards the end of this presentation to share. Um, but the one that we're going to talk about today is one that I really like. It's our basic lifestyle guidelines. Um, I talk to companies and organizations and nonprofits and other groups about these all the time. Uh, and it's really exciting because these are things that everyone can understand and everyone can implement and they're relatively simple, very affordable and just really, really easy things to get started on that are going to have a major impact um in people's lives so everyone here knows me.
And luckily for me, I'm currently training to qualify for the Boston Marathon, which means most of my fitness has been done outside alone. <laughs> Pretty much business as usual for me, uh, which is nice. But I know that that's not the case for a lot of other folks. And so that's why it's really exciting. routine our day-to-day -day life is completely knocked out of whack. Um, so we all know what self BLG is. So these provide a foundation I really like to talk about. One of the quotes I love is that um, we don't rise to the occasion, we fall to the level of our training. And so what I mean when I say that is that a lot of times when things get stressful or we get out of our routine or we're in something crazy, we want to believe that we will just rise to the occasion and be the absolute best version of ourselves that we can be and we'll just handle it all. Um, and while that does happen sometimes, um, it's a lot of pressure and it's really hard. And so what happens more often than not is we kind of fall back on these habits that we have. And if we have bad habits of not sleeping well and maybe drinking to cope with things and not having healthy habits in place, then that puts us just deeper into the hole when we're already in kind of a stressful situation. But if we have good habits, that means that even though things are crazy, we're still able to take care of ourselves at a basic level um, and that helps us stay healthier and be more resilient. And that's really what, what we're trying to get at, especially in these times, is how can we be resilient um, against the things that are happening? And that doesn't necessarily mean um, you know, physically resilient and immune to viruses and sicknesses, right? Like that can mean resilient to just changing situations, misfortunes, things that come up that we can't um, how do we handle these without completely overwhelmed and acting in ways that um, don't are simple? These are the things that we all have access to. Uh, I've got Google Fiber. Let me know uh, if that cuts out, unfortunately, again. Um, but the things we're going to talk about today are sunshine, movement, nutrition, which Jesse got into a little bit um, more in depth on Monday. We'll talk about sleep. We'll talk about stress, which we're going to get into, again, even more next week as it relates to the immune system. And then we'll talk about hydration. Um, so let's get into it. Sunshine. So luckily, most of us live in Texas and at least in places where we get good sun. The sun is coming out now for us in Austin, which is amazing. Um, but sunshine is probably one of the most overlooked um, you know, medical interventions. The vitamin D is super cheap, right? We can all go out and get some. Um, and so many studies have shown that it clearly reduces all cause mortality. And not, even, not just that, but when we go outside and we actually have sunshine hitting our retinas, that helps to regulate our body's systems, our circadian rhythm, our blood pressure, our body temperature, hormones, all of these things that help us to body maintain some kind of semblance of normalcy and um, continue to thrive. And some of the recommendations that we have for sign are 20 minutes push that to a little bit longer. Um, going out unprotected. So this is the thing that there's a couple of them say this. Uh, because for so long now, um, 
I'm gonna keep chugging along, I think. Maybe I will, yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Thankfully, this is being recorded. I'm hoping that it's recording my voice, what I'm saying, and not necessarily what you all are hearing. Uh, that would be awesome. And then for the remainder of these, um, I guess I should listen to Jesse and gone to the gym to do this. So we had a wife on um, trying to shelter in place. Um, so talking about sunshine um, and going unprotected, we've been hearing about SPF for a while now. Don't go out unprotected. You have to protect yourself. Put on SPF. You don't want all these UV rays. Um, and that comes from what was happening a few decades ago when we would see all of these fabulous women at the beach slathered in baby oil with their foil screens. Um, and that was not great. That was not great. But what happened is we overcorrected. And now we're just trying to completely cover ourselves. And what that means is that we're limiting the UV rays that we're getting, but we're also limiting vitamin D and cut almost all of it out. And so this is individualized. And so for some people like me, probably like Steven, probably like you, Megan, we can go outside for a little bit longer without anything on and we can be okay. We've got folks like Tyler and <laughs> Jesse who will burn a little bit easier. Um, so you need to figure out what kind of works for you. Um, but try to go out with 40% of your body exposed, uh, limit sunglasses. That goes back to what we we're talking about before uh, with actually trying to let sunlight hit our retinas. Um, we're not gonna be staring at the sun. That's still not great. Um, but just kind of like glance up at it every now and then. Um, help your body figure out kind of what time of day it is and, and where we're at. Um, but then of course supplementation uh, is always uh, um, going to be a good option for a lot of people. Um, and that is definitely something you still want to be talking to a professional coach about before you go buying supplements. The next thing to discuss is movement and how important this is. I know we've got Siri out on a walk right now, getting her movement in for the day. Um, when we take a look at uh, total daily energy expenditure as it, oops, sorry, I've got a phone call and lost everything. Here we go. We take a look at total daily energy expenditure and how much calories we're burning essentially throughout the day. The majority of it, as you can see, is our resting energy expenditure. If we laid in bed all day long, didn't move, how much would we burn? So as you can see, 70%, that's a lot. Um, and then the next biggest chunk we have here is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that is, we're moving around, but we're not working out. That's, we're at the grocery store, we're taking a dog for a walk, we're on a bike ride with our friends, um, we're kind of walking around the office chatting with people, not so much anymore, we lost that one. Um, but we're kind of vacuuming the house, we're moving around cleaning, all of those things that we're doing that are not exercise, but that keep our body moving. And so it's really important to make sure that we are getting in that non-exercise movement throughout the day as well to help with body composition. But we also know anecdotally, all of us here that we just feel better when we get to move. And so making sure that we implement that is going to help with mental health as well. So our recommendations for movement, eight to 10,000 steps a day. Um, again, this is individualized. If you have someone, you know, Megan, for example, if one of your clients is moving 3,000 steps a day, asking them to do 10,000 is just impossible. Um, but if we can say, let's aim for 4,000 and then maybe 5,000, slowly we can get them there to a place where they feel like they're reaching their goals and feeling accomplished. Um, this is low level movement too. So biking, walking, swimming, all of those things. Um, and then what gets measured gets managed. Um, so, so tracking this stuff, whether it's through a Fitbit or Garmin, like what I've got on, got a lot of folks with Apple watches, um, even just our health app on our phone. The drawback of that is you have to have your phone on you all the time, which not always awesome. Um, but there's plenty of ways to track this stuff and just make sure that we're getting in good quality movement throughout the day. 
So I'm going to briefly touch on nutrition. Jesse did a really great job with that on Monday. That quote, Megan, is what gets measured gets managed. So that's a favorite in a business tech startup, um, but I love it. Works for everything. Um, and so we're talking about nutrition as it relates to um, kind of our routine and our resiliency. One of the things we're talking about is blood sugar management. And so we have, um, probably not in this group, but definitely some of the other groups I talked to, folks who breakfast is a muffin, or it's a bowl of cereal, or it's nothing, or it's a, a huge cup of coffee and that's it. Um, and what those muffins and cereal do for people is it spikes their blood sugar. And so after they eat, they feel great. They're ready to tackle a day, so much energy. And then very quickly they dip down and they're reaching for another big cup of coffee or an energy drink. And they kind of go through this cycle all day long of being up and down. And what we wanna try and do is keep that a little bit flatter and manage that response better. And the way that we can do that is by eating more whole grains, more fruits and veggies, really trying to limit processed carbs and sugary foods. So some of the recommendations for nutrition, um, protein, great for a number of reasons, body composition, um, being satiated, so we're not snacking as much. I want to try and get one gram per pound of body weight and that is a kind of broad recommendation this depends on a lot of things people's goals their movement levels um we want to think about meal timing so when times of the day are we eating when do we feel best how does that align with when we're working out um avoiding processed carbs and then a big one, especially now that people can really start taking advantage of is food hygiene. And so what we mean by this is cooking our food at home, being able to smell our food, being excited to eat, sitting down with our family, putting phones away, having a nice meal where we're chewing our food and not just scarfing things into our face, um, you know, between meetings or something like that. Um, you know, one of the opportunities that this unfortunate situation uh, has provided for us is an opportunity to build new habits. And Coach Tyler is going to be doing a talk about habits on Friday of this week and how we can build new good habits, break some of those bad habits. Um, but this does give us an opportunity to start implementing some of these really valuable things that we can hopefully carry over when things go back to normal. I'm um, gonna big one of those opportunities I think is around food hygiene and the way that we eat. The next thing to talk about is sleep, one of my favorites, um, but there has been you know, a ton of studies done on sleep and the impacts that sleep has on our body. A great book that um, we have, most of us have read is Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep. Um, and so routinely sleeping less than seven hours a night has some pretty, pretty gnarly uh, physical impacts. Um, demolishes the immune system. So something everybody's talking about right now is our immune system. And if we're not sleeping a lot, that is putting us at a much greater risk of being susceptible to getting sick and to not being able to fight off sicknesses when they come. Um, doubles risk of cancer, determines Alzheimer's disease, it disrupts blood sugar levels. So when we were talking before with nutrition about those spiking blood sugar and the impact that has, sleeping poorly also plays into that. Um, and then when we are disrupting blood sugar levels, that means that we're struggling to maybe lose fat, we're struggling to be able to hold on to the muscle that we're building in the gym because our body's not recovering. Um, so all of these things, not to mention the cognitive impacts of not sleeping, the emotional and mental ones. I know for myself, if I'm getting less than seven hours of sleep a night, I'm just not that fun to be around the next day. 
not a great boss, not a great teammate, not a great friend, um, not even a great pet owner. <laughs> like my cat can't even escape my wrath. Um, and so really, really important to make sure that we're getting good sleep. So our recommendations here are aiming for seven to nine hours in bed. And with that, trying to have consistent waking times and bedtimes. Um, and this is another time where this gives us a good opportunity to get into these better habits. Um, because there also is a big opportunity here to set some awful, awful sleeping habits. We've all been there, maybe winter break during college or home for a month, there are no rules, no schedule. And the first week you stay up a little bit later than normal, sleep a little bit later. And then the next week you're sleeping later, so you're not as tired. So you stay up a little bit later and then you sleep later. And then by week four, you're up till two in the morning, you sleep till noon and everything is a wreck when you try and get back to school and get back in the routine. So trying to keep those times consistent, um, sleep in a cool, dark room, shouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face. Um, try to dim the lights, put blue blockers on past sunset. So now we're getting into the time. Um, it was still kind of light out at about 8 p.m. last night. I personally love it, but that does kind of disrupt our body understanding what time it is and what we're doing. And so trying to kind of tone things down in your, in your own home as the sun is setting. Uh, avoiding caffeine past 12 p.m., that's a huge one, really, really tough for people. Um, I can't drink caffeine past like 8.30 in the morning and I'll have problems. Um, and so trying to cut back on that, caffeine has a half-life of about eight hours. Um, there could be some differences for different individuals, but um, that means your morning coffee still in blood system in the afternoon when you go for your afternoon coffee and both of them are still in your blood system when you try and go to bed not great for being able to fall asleep and get good quality sleep stress this is probably a big one for right now um, a lot of people feeling heightened levels of anxiety, of stress, being out of their routine, not knowing what's going on in the world, not knowing what's going on with maybe their business, their job, their family, their own health. Um, and so really important to talk about this. And Jesse is actually going to dive deeper into stress um, next week. So I'll kind of touch on it a little bit right now. Um, so one of the things we do know is the potential for human growth occurs on the border of support and challenge. So what that means is that we don't need a life that is completely free of stress and completely free of hardships and challenges, because then we wouldn't have much to overcome to grow. Uh, but we do need to make sure we balance that with the necessary support to get as much as we can out of it. And so a couple of ways that we recommend kind of dealing with stress is one, do something you love every single day. It's okay if it's just five minutes. If it's coloring, if it's knitting, crafting, if it's doing math problems, if it's playing with your pet, whatever it is that just makes you feel happy, do that every day. Um, get parasympathetic. We spend a lot of our time in a sympathetic fight or flight state, ready to take action on whatever the next thing that comes our way is. And that's difficult and that wreaks havoc on our body. And so I recommend taking a hundred deep breaths throughout the day, try various meditation apps like HeartMath, Headspace. I really like Calm or Simple Habit. Um, but the other thing that's going to be really, really impactful here. And this is a long game, this one, um, but it has really, really great return on the investment and that's creating a paradigm shift. So changing the way that we think about stress. And so for a lot of us, stress is, oh, this is bad. This is not good. I'm stressed out. I feel terrible. But if we can learn to think about stress as an opportunity, as okay, this is something that's challenging, 
but I have done challenging things before and I can overcome this, then it actually changes the impact that stress has on our body. And so Kelly McGonigal uh, is a researcher, PhD. She's written a ton of books and done a lot of research about stress. And um, one of the things she's found is that it isn't stress that kills people. It's the belief that stress is harmful for us. And so if we can change the way we think about stress, we can actually change the way our body physically responds to it, uh, which is super, super interesting. So if we're thinking about stress as preparing our body for a challenge, um, then our blood vessels are not constricting when we see it as positive. Like it literally changes the way our body responds, which is amazing. Um, oxytocin is released as a stress response, but what that also does is it prompts you to reach out to friends and family for support, which makes the stress feel less bad. Um, so the results of stress are changed by our mindset. There is so much more we can get into with this, but I'm going to let Jesse take that um, next week. Uh, but I did finish reading The Upside of Stress uh, by Kelly McGonigal, which I highly recommend. Jesse will be pulling from some of that information. Uh, but it was so fascinating to learn about the different ways that uh, we can change how our body responds to stress. And really it talks about how powerful our mind is and how powerful it is when we change the way we think about things. Um, provides lots of opportunities for growth, not just with kind of stress, but with our job and our professional life, with our relationships, with our uh, training pursuits. And so really, really awesome. And so to kind of tie that into what's going on right now, um, one of the things that I've been encouraging our whole team to do that I've been doing a lot is a lot of what's going on now is out of our control. There's, there's a lot that we just can't do anything about. And so if we focus on that, that's going to be really, really tough for us. But if we spend our time focusing on the things we can control, focusing on the things we're talking about here, we can control our movement. We control the food we put in our body. We control the people we interact with, the way we spend our time. And all of those things can help us get through this experience in a more positive way. And the final one, hydration. You probably saw me take a drink of my water. Uh, the nice thing about working from home is that I control the temperature in this apartment. Uh, Jesse no longer controls the temperature of my working environment at the gym, uh, which is kept at a real nice 68. Fantastic for training, suboptimal for working for seven to eight hours. Um, and so it's been nice and toasty. I've been drinking a ton of water. It's been wonderful. Um, I think we, we all kind of... Uh, in the back of our minds, we know how important water is. We learned in elementary school how much of humans are water. Um, our brain is water, our bone is water. It fills all the spaces between our cells. Um, it helps us eliminate toxins. Our daily energy depends on water. It's necessary for adequate function of our organs. Um, so water is very important, uh, but I think it also is often pretty overlooked. Um, people also think they're drinking more water than they are. I am definitely guilty of this. There have been times where I thought I was cruising, drinking enough water. Uh, when I decided to start tracking it again to check in, uh, I was not drinking nearly enough water. Um, and so why, one of the things that uh, is really important here, similar to our steps, what gets measured gets managed. If we're tracking something, we have our eyes wide open, we know what's going on, we can make necessary changes. Um, so tracking total water intake. We recommend drinking at least half your body weight in ounces of water per day. Uh, of course, that changes when we're adding exercise into the mix, when we're just going out and about living our life in Texas for about nine months out of the year, that changes, and we need more water. Uh, one of the best ways to to kind of help with this is purchasing a reusable water bottle. So one of the pictures mine, um, know how much water goes in it. And then you just know, okay, I drank three of these for, for the day. This is how much water I have. This is good. Um, 
And so to review, we talked about a lot of things. Um, one of the things Tyler will talk about on Friday about setting habits is that what we know does not work is changing a million things at once. And so if we look at this list and this is kind of something we're struggling with a couple of these, I applaud the ambition of saying, hell yeah, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to do all of this every day. It's going to be great. Um, but unfortunately, it, you're probably not going to be successful. Uh, and so when we kind of look at all these, you know, sleeping seven to nine hours each night, getting out in the sun 20 minutes a day, 100 intentional breaths, half your body weight in ounces per water, 10,000 steps a day, protein at every meal, limiting processed carbs, all of that stuff, um, it's, it's a lot, it's overwhelming. And there are some of these things that I'm still working on. And so what we recommend is picking one of these habits to start improving on. And we'll kind of get into that um, in a minute. But I first want to see, I know a lot of this is probably familiar to, to most of us, but I want to see if there are any questions. I know I probably broke up a couple of times, so I apologize about that. But I hope the slides uh, were good enough so that you just missed funny jokes and stuff and not anything important. Um, so if there are no questions, then what I want people to do right now, and I'll flip back to that review slide in a second, but I want everybody to pick one BLG that they're going to either implement into their lives, a new thing, or something they're going to improve upon that they're already doing. Then uh, I want you to write it down somewhere where you can see it every day. So whether that's a sticky note on your mirror, whether that is an image that you put on the background of your phone, whether you put something on the fridge, uh, something in your training notebook, whatever it is, you want to be able to see these things every day. All right, awesome. And then we're going to share. So you can kind of write in the chat box, um, what is the BLG that you want to improve upon over the next two weeks? Got two for breathing. All right, Central Athlete Team, we're, we're not doing so great in the conscious breaths. <laughs> we can work on that team meditations. Um, Tyler walking, okay. Todd, water. Ooh, yeah, that elevation will get you. All right, awesome. Intentional breaths, water. River needs some more sunlight. All right, luckily for River, his parents are good with the walks so he can get the sunshine. All right, we're seeing Debbie with more steps and sunshine. Hey, Debbie, I'm glad you could join us. Siri, another thousand steps a day. That's an awesome goal. So I think mine definitely, I need to get a little bit better at water. That's been, um, you know, improving a little bit. Definitely the conscious breathing for me as well. Um, Jess likes to make fun of the way I breathe because sometimes I breathe like this. It's actually been impressive. I don't think I've done it while I've been talking, which uh, that's sometimes one of the things that gets me. <laughs> so, so maybe a central athlete team, we need to start implementing a little five minute meditation at our team meetings. We could all breathe a little bit better. Um, and so we've got all this here, right? We're all seeing what our goals are. We're saying them out loud. And so the important thing here too, is that we need to follow up. Right. And so it doesn't matter if you kind of say you're going to do it and then you don't check in, you don't let people know. So here we all, we're a team. We're all accountable to each other. Now we said the things we're going to work on. We have the time to try and work on them. We have the support system, right? You have us. That is why we're doing these talks. We're always available. Myself, Jesse, Tyler, Steven, always available to answer questions. Text us if you need a reminder to do these things. I've got a friend of mine who, you know, when all this began, she said, hey, can you please text me and, and make sure I go on walks every day? Yes, I can do that. Um, whatever accountability you need, let us know, but also follow up with all of us in a couple weeks or every day. If you post something on Instagram, if you get in your steps, if you, you know, taking your intentional breaths with an app or something like that, um, post on Instagram, tag all of us so we know how you're doing. Whatever it is, I want to be here to support each other. So, oh, I'm so glad to hear that this stuff is helpful. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties in the beginning. 
Um, I thought about upgrading my Wi-Fi right before this. It's seventy dollars, and right now I paid zero dollars. Um, so that was that was a tough one. If it was fifty, I was going to do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Jesse was right about that. But I was right about Monday's talk uh, and Jesse needing an hour to do it. So now we're even. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that this could be interactive. Love it. Um, we're kind of ahead of time, but that just gives y'all some more time to figure out how you're gonna implement this. Um, but I appreciate y'all joining us. I will send out the slides and the recording. Check in, let us know how we can help. Oh, I actually forgot, here is the next, um, the stuff coming up next. So on Monday, Tyler is gonna be talking about habits. Uh, that's gonna be a really, really good one. A lot of interesting things to learn there. Um, next Monday, because Stephen's going to be talking about alcohol. I'm super excited for that one, especially because we're seeing a lot of folks um, heading out to buy, you know, stockpiling their wine and their beer because they're going to be home alone and need to be drinking. Uh, that's a fascinating one. So Stephen's going to going to really talk to us about um, what's going on there. Um, Wednesday, Jesse will dig into stress and stress management more and how that impacts our immunity. And then next Friday, one of us wonderful people is gonna talk more in depth about sleep. Um, another really, really great one. Um, we're gonna try and figure out what it looks like going forward after these two weeks, now that we're kind of sheltering in place even longer than we anticipated. Um, we definitely still wanna continue doing these discussions. Um, after this, I think we probably will kind of get into some more broader topics um, around health and fitness and moving and how people can continue to, to stay healthy and keep moving while they're home. Um, if you have ideas, let us know. We would love to hear them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I've got, folks. It was wonderful seeing all your faces. Um, so glad y'all are joining. Thank you. So, yeah, Megan, great question. Right now, the schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If this is going on for the foreseeable future, we might need to adjust that just to make sure that our team has adequate time to keep preparing these. Um, so we might shift down to maybe two a week, um, but we'll keep everybody posted. Right now, the way the Facebook event is set up, um, <laughs> Debbie changing from looking at her son to looking at Jesse's. I understand that. Um, <laughs> right now, the way the Facebook is set up is it's recurring and I can update dates. So this will be the same Zoom link for all the rest of these talks. And even if we change the dates, it'll be the same. It'll be updated in that Facebook event. And then we'll keep sharing stuff um, on Facebook. And Todd, yes, it is. So good to, to be connected with you and to have you coming to all these. We definitely miss you in Austin. Um, River definitely stealing the show from me. So thankfully, I don't think he's going to be in the recording. <laughs> um, all right, are there any other questions from anybody before we wrap this thing up? All right, awesome. Then I will let y'all get back to your day. Go out for a walk. It's beautiful outside, drink some water eat some good food, and uh, call your mom or something maybe, call a friend, stay connected. All right, great seeing y'all. Have a great day.